JS 11 weather first. Well, the weather has been beautiful for us with comforter te comfortable temperatures all week, but it is still February and that means it is still winter. Thanks so much for joining us here on the night team. I'm Alex Dieterer. We have a winter weather advisory tomorrow and some of us could even see some snow. Meteorologist Reed Yaden joining us now. Reed, what's the latest? Well, in this now forecast? that we got everybody's attention, Alex, you said the word snow. Okay, yes, we have a winter weather advisory, as Alex said, occupying most of the viewing area, except a slice at the north and a slice at the south. So what does that mean? Well, it's in effect from 7 o'clock tomorrow morning till 7 p.m. tomorrow night. What we look like, we develop rain tomorrow, then it changes over late tomorrow evening or tomorrow night to a mix of rain and snow, and some of it could be heavy at times. Positive accumulations, what impact will we have on your Tuesday morning rush hour? I'll come back and we'll discuss that in just a few minutes. Now, here's the way we look. Rain chances tomorrow, you're going to be dry during the morning and dry for a good part of the day. I think it's afternoon after 3 or 4 o'clock before we really see the rain set in. There could be some rumbles of thunder. Changeover comes late tomorrow evening and then at last, well, we'll talk about that. A little bit later, because that could impact your Tuesday morning rush hour. We'll discuss it all for you when we see you in just a few minutes. Alex, back to you. Thanks, Reed. Well, it's been no secret that Kentucky has seen a boom in sports betting since its launch in September. But this weekend may prove to be the most lucrative of them all for venues following the big game that just wrapped up in Vegas. WHAS 11 night teams Connor Steffen and photojournalist Aspen Hester are checking in on how businesses are faring as thousands of Kentuckians hope to score big on wagers during the Super Bowl. Over at downtown Derby City Gaming's first turn bar, the sports betting kiosk stayed full for hours as one after another hopefuls made their bets on the big game. Kansas City because of their defense. As Christian McCaffrey plays for San Francisco, so I'm kind of rooting for him and, and, and his success with that. But, uh, but Kansas City, I, I, I like them as well. You know, this is going to be interesting because we've not ever had sports betting for Super Bowl. You can add it to the growing list of firsts Kentucky's betting venues saw this last year when lawmakers finally passed a law legalizing sports betting in the Commonwealth. Long overdue. Yeah, long, long overdue. We, we, let, we, we let cars drive over the bridge right here into Indiana. Um, it's, it's been long overdue. And now Kentuckians join an estimated 26% of adults in betting on the Super Bowl. The American Gaming Association expects a record 67.8 million Americans will put money on the game. That's up 35% from last year. The association also says betters plan to wager an estimated $23.1 billion, up from $16 billion in 2023. The Derby City Gaming and Hotel venue off Poplar Level Road is hoping to capitalize off that this weekend. Um, we have tons of things lined up with the game. It's a huge TV to watch it, but we'll also have representatives from Patron. And we'll have some swag. Um, we'll have some of the best chicken wings, we can argue. Sports kiosks at the ready, bolstering thousands of potential Super Bowl bets. You know, I think the whole weekend will be kind of a new baseline for us to understand what sports betting and Super Bowl means here for this property. In Louisville, Connor Steffen, the WHAS 1119 on your side. In this past October alone, the first full month of legalized sports wagering, Kentuckians spent over $294 million at in-person sports books and on mobile apps. That's according to state data. But now there's a heightened plea to help those struggling with addiction. If you or someone you know has a gambling addiction, you can take a look at this number right here on your screen, 1-800-522-4700. The National Pro Problem Gambling Hotline is open 24-7 every day. Well, in a rare move, the Kentucky House unanimously passed a bill this week banning together to bolster disclosure of sexual misconduct allegations against teachers. House Bill 275 hopes to make it more difficult for teachers with allegations of sexual misconduct to move from one district to another. The bill would require districts to con contact each district that previously employed a job applicant for a reference check. Previous employers would have to disclose any allegation or disciplinary action related to abusive conduct while the applicant worked for the district. This is a piece of legislation that I honestly wish we didn't have to deal with. And I'm going to say that 99.9% .9 plus 
of her dedicated teachers and those individuals who work in her school systems are there to support our children, to help them in their education. The bill now heads to the Senate. A bill to change the way teens are prosecuted for certain crimes is now moving forward. A Senate committee approved the proposal that would prosecute teens as adults if they're charged with felonies involving guns. This reverses a 2021 law that ended the automatic transfer from juvenile to adult court in certain cases. When explaining his bill, Senator Matthew Deneen from Elizabethtown said youth crime is on the rise and also goes beyond Louisville and Lexington. It is our responsibility, I believe, to draw a line in the sand and to say for these types of crimes, these adult crimes, that the punishment should be fitting of the crime. The bill would allow for a teen's case to return to juvenile court if prosecutors choose to, but Republican Senator Whitney Westerfield argued an automatic transfer still takes away a judge's discretion. Westerfield helped pass the 2021 law. You have robbed the prosecution and the court of weighing the factors that have been in statute since long before I got here. In fact, long before I was practicing law. The seriousness of the offense, whether it was against property with or a person with greater weight being given to offenses against people, the maturity of the child as determined by their environment, their prior record. The bill will now go to the full Senate for consideration. One person is dead this evening after crashing into three homes in the Park Hill neighborhood. At around 11 this morning, LMPD 2nd Division officers responded to a call of a single vehicle crash right here on Wilson Avenue, which is near 23rd Street. LMPD's preliminary investigation says that an adult male was driving a passenger vehicle when he lost control of the car and hit three homes. As a result of the crash, the driver was pronounced dead at the scene. LMPD says that according to witnesses, speed was a factor. No one else was hurt in the crash. The LMPD traffic unit is continuing its investigation. LMPD is also investigating after two deadly shootings overnight. One was in the California neighborhood at about four this morning. Officers responded to the shooting on West Broadway, about a block away from the Kroger on South 28th Street. Police found a man who is now identified as 37-year-old Ronald Beatty had been shot and he did die at the scene. Police are also investigating a shooting in the Okolona neighborhood. LMPD says it happened around 1.15 this morning on Egypt Lane, which is not far from Preston Highway and Outer Loop. When officers arrived at the scene, they found a man, 27-year-old Ronald Hall, had been shot inside a vehicle. Hall also died at the scene. Anyone with information about either of these shootings is asked to call the anonymous tip line 574-LMPD. New for you tonight, Houston police are investigating after they say a woman opened fire at Pastor Joel Osteen's megachurch. Authorities say the Spanish language service was about to start when the chaos erupted. The police chief says that a woman entered the church with a long rifle and opened fire before being shot and killed by two off-duty officers. The woman had a child with her who police say was shot in the exchange of gunfire between the woman and the off-duty officers. Police say the child is currently in critical condition. A man in his 50s was also shot in his leg. That's according to police. Witness recount the moment that shots rang out. There was a lady running, she almost fell down the steps, and I told her, hey, you dropped something. She said something in Spanish I couldn't understand, and I saw someone else running down the steps, and that's when I heard the two gunshots. I was going towards my family, and I heard another gunshot coming closer, so I was like, I can't, I can't go up there. Now. The motive for the shooting is unknown at this time. The off-duty officers will be placed on administrative leave while an investigation into the shooting takes place. For the first time ever, JCPS started a basketball team for students in wheelchairs this year. Photojournalist Addie Hill shows us the Louisville Lightning's last scrimmage today against a team from Cincinnati. One, two, three. So we're playing against the Cincinnati prep team, and we were supposed to play them late, earlier on in the year season, but we couldn't. So we're playing them now. I think everybody came today. We're all just really excited and everybody's like really excited to work together and just be part of such a great team. The sports that they're doing here is going to carry on for the rest of their lives. Um, 
and he started looking around and he wanted to play basketball. He used to kind of be a, a little angry and a little upset about his diagnosis and not being able to do what other, th other th kids can do. So when he gets around other kids that are at the same level or close to his level, it is a huge confidence boosting and he is just, it, it's opened him up. And a special thank to the Cincinnati Dragons for driving all this way to help Curry Justin. My husband and I have spent seven years taking him around to play wheelchair basketball, so to have something here locally now is really cool. Definitely, Jordan. It is, uh, it's been one of the greatest times of my life. The Louisville Lightning is also an adapted track and field team, which begins in March. For more information about the team and the sports, you can head to our website, whas11.com.